Where are the best restaurants in Denver? There are so many places to eat here, and honestly, so many good places, it could be hard to choose to know where should I go? Where should I spend my hard-earned money? Well, I am going to give you my list of my seven favorites and tell you why it is I love them. Just real quick before we start, if you've been around here a while, you know I'm a licensed real estate broker in Denver, Colorado. I would love to be your go-to real estate resource. Love making these videos, love being the digital tour guide, but even more, I love helping you with your real estate questions. I will put my info below as always. Please reach out, let's talk. Okay, so here's the deal. This is my list of what I think is the seven best restaurants in Denver, spanning all kinds of food genres. Um, this is just my list. I didn't look at anything. I didn't Google and check other best of lists, you can do that. that. That makes zero sense. This is just my opinion for what I think, living here well over a decade, are the best places to eat in Denver. The only real caveat I have is no chains. Like a lot of people will say quality Italian is one of the best restaurants in Denver and it is excellent, but it's a chain. So I don't, I don't know why, I just, I don't want it. Same with Barcelona, great place, great wine bar, but it started in like Connecticut. I, uh, something about that feels less good to me. Just my thing, feel free to disagree. So here's the list in no particular order. The first one is Tavernetta, right downtown. Tavernetta is tremendous. It is part of the Frasca Hospitality Group, which started Frasca Food and Wine in Boulder, which may be the best restaurant in all of Colorado, but it's not in Denver, so I'm not including it in this list. Tavernetta is elevated Italian food. I mean, handmade pastas, lamb ragu, prawns, veal, the whole deal. It's a spendy spot, but it is worth it. The whole experience is great. The vibe is tremendous. The service is excellent, like actually excellent. A lot of times people say that and it's like fine. No, these people really go above and beyond to make sure you're having an exquisite experience. And this is how I look at it. Dining can get really expensive these days. It's, it's not hard to go drop a few hundred dollars on dinner at all. And okay, I wanna make sure if I'm doing that, I'm actually getting a requisite experience. If I'm spending excellent money, it should be an excellent experience. And if it is, I'm okay with that. Tavernetta is one of those spots. I've never been disappointed at Tavernetta and it is worth it if you wanna drop a little coin on a date night. And they also have happy hour from four to six. Not all these fancy places have a happy hour. So if you wanna try it out without going all in, Go before six. The second one on the list is Sushi Den. If you've lived in Denver for any period of time, you know what I'm talking about. It is an institution. Sushi Den just quite simply has the best sushi in town. I don't wanna hear about Uchi or some other fancy Johnny come lately. They've been doing it forever at the location on Old South Pearl, and it really is a beautiful building. Uh, you walk in there and the architecture and the design is just, just fantastic and that goes to making the whole experience great. Exactly the same thing I talked about with Tavernetta. I mean, from the, the food to the service to the, the vibe, it's all great. And the sushi is just top notch. I would venture it's about as good as you can get not on a coast or in Japan. If you're a sushi lover, go to Sushi Den first, but make a reservation early because they fill up pretty quick. Number three on the list and probably my first curveball, the cherry tomato. Cherry Tomato is a local neighborhood eatery in Park Hill where I lived for many years. It is easily my favorite spot in that neighborhood. It's an Italian spot as well, but it's different from Tavernetta. Cherry Tomato is nothing fancy. It's just classic, good, traditional Italian food. It's warm in there. It always smells like garlic. You're probably gonna smell like garlic when you leave. Open kitchen, a very mm, homey vibe which I personally love. You start to recognize the waiters after you go there for a while because there's not a lot of turnover. It really is a neighborhood Italian spot. I've had food snobs turn up their noses when I've mentioned cherry tomato before because it's not fancy and it doesn't make the, the best of lists. But what I find, or what I have found in the past is generally the people who are like, oh, that's not good, haven't actually been to Italy. And if you have, and you've been to you know, Tuscany or the countryside and have experienced that uh, mama's downstairs cooking in the kitchen, making her famous recipes, Italian food, cherry tomato is the vibe that you get there. It won't break the bank and it's just delicious food, especially the carbonara. If you go there and you get the carbonara, you will not be disappointed. I still have dreams about it. I'm only like 15 minutes down the road, so I could just still go. I'll probably go soon. Number four on the list and getting even less fancy, Biker Jim's Gourmet Dogs. 
That's right, Hot Dog Place downtown. Again, if you've spent time in downtown Denver, chances are you've come across biker gyms. It is kind of iconic, but not like, oh, Food Network, uh, diners, drive-ins, and dives iconic. Maybe they've been there. People know about it, it just doesn't seem like it's talked about like, uh, you know, some fancy, uh, really, really famous place. It's a great lunch spot downtown. It's no frills, but it's just great, delicious dogs. They've got all kinds of meats, rattlesnake, ostrich, boar, but they have normal beef and bison too. And you can build your own. You can build it how you want it with the toppings. My favorite is the Biker Gyms Classic with the cream cheese and the caramelized onions, but you can kind of do whatever you want. If you've never been, go for lunch, treat yourself. It's like 10, 12 bucks, have a great dog. You won't be disappointed. Number five on the list, Bistro Vendome. This is one of the first restaurants I ever fell in love with in Denver years and years ago. It is classic French dining. If you look at the menu, it's like, yes, this is a French dinner place, but it's not pretentious. It's not insanely expensive. And um, you know, it's approachable. It's, it's somewhat affordable and it's just a great place to have a, an excellent meal. I'm a steak guy and the steak frites are out of this world. Now some big changes as I'm recording this, they're actually moving and are about to open their new location um, in Park Hill. So for the longest time, Bistro Vendome was, was downtown in Larimer Square, had this really cool like courtyard vibe. It, it a really, really cool space. Unfortunately, that building has been bought and actually a lot of people are kind of being pushed out because they're gonna redevelop it, which sucks. But luckily for Bistro Vendome and luckily for Park Hill, this shining dining establishment found a spot in the neighborhood of Park Hill. So not great for Larimer Square, but what a get for Park Hill, my beloved Park Hill. Um, it's really going to do great things for the neighborhood. I have no doubt it's going to be the same food quality, same experience. The chef, Jen Jasinski, who's, who's the owner, is just amazing in everything she does. And um, so I can't wait to try out the new location. Number six, if you've talked to me about Denver food, you've heard me mention this place, Sholo. I say Cholon and I always hear it pronounced Cholon. One time I heard the owner, Ron Semenzma, say Cholon? I mean, he would know. So maybe it's actually pronounced Cholon, but I don't know. It just feels weird. I'll probably keep saying Cholon until someone actually comes up and corrects me. Anyway, whatever you call it, it is modern Asian food and it's just delicious. They have so many dishes that uh, I've never tasted anything like that anywhere else. And they have, bar none, the best dumplings in town. They experiment and they do different versions depending on the time of the year, what they're doing with the dumplings. There's a sweet potato dumpling that's awesome. There's one that's called General Cho's. It's delicious. But the classic, the old standby at Cholon, Cholon is the French onion soup dumpling. It is undefeated all time. It's a whole bunch of fun food. And what I love about it is it's stuff I could never make at home. You know, I, I love a good steakhouse, but I can make a pretty good steak at home too. So mm, rather than spending all that money to go out to a steakhouse, which still sometimes, there's a time and a place. But in general, I like to go to a place like this where I'm never gonna make any of this stuff in the Kaya toast. It's like this toast that you dip in this foamy thing. It's, it's incredible. Um, so it's a good use of time and it's, it's a dining experience you're never gonna get at home. They have happy hour from 4 to 5.30. I highly recommend it because you can try all these things at lower prices. Two locations, one downtown, that's the original, and they have one in Eastbridge in the Central Park area that I've been to a number of times. Can confirm, both phenomenal. And finally on the list, Blue Island Oyster Bar. When talking about best restaurants somewhere, it's all subjective, right? We're just having fun. So best, I don't know what that means, but Blue Island may be my favorite place to go in Denver. It is an oyster bar slash seafood joint in Cherry Creek, and for my money, it has the best happy hour in town. $2 oysters plus great cocktails and some other food specials too. You can go there, have delicious seafood, suck down some oysters, some great drinks, a great experience, and not spend a ton of money. It's also a beautiful room, the way they designed it. It's really, really cool. It's nice, but it feels welcoming. I like to sit at the bar and you can watch the oyster shuckers do their work. It's just a fun experience. The whole place, from the decor, from the service, from the food, it beautifully straddles the line between approachable and fancy. And in Cherry Creek, that is an accomplishment. And I'm sure you're thinking, Sam, there's something you missed. Why didn't you mention this? What is wrong with you? Are you insane? Quite possibly, yes. Weigh in in the comments or send me a message. Maybe I'll do a follow-up. I don't know, of course there's stuff I've missed. That's what makes this fun. So thank you guys for being here. Again, if you have any sort of real estate questions, any needs, stuff you just wanna bounce off someone, I aim to be your go-to real estate resource. You can contact me, phone, email, those are below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I will see you soon.